page for hardware hub. So if you're going to get any Raspberry Pis, Arduinos, monitors, things like that, you can book them all through here. And finally, if you want to add your GitHub link repo, then we're going to be making a visualization of IC Hack 18, and hopefully that'll look great. So please, please go ahead and submit your link there. Um, I'm going to hand over to ICRS, and they're going to talk to you a bit more about the hardware lab. Hello. So we are ICRS, and I'm just going to give you a brief rundown all about us before I get into what you can do at ICRS during the hackathon. Um, so we are a student-run society, and what we have is a lab in the Tripoli, in the Tripoli department where people are free to come and do their, their robotics or electronics-related projects, be it for personal projects or maybe even coursework-related things. Um, we provide a kind of also a, help, a helping environment where we, um, where we help each other with, with knowledge and where we also provide tools and all that sort of thing for people to be able to realize their, their projects. Um, we also participate in competitions uh, such as Eurobot, PyWalls or VEX if anybody is interested in any of those. And we also run courses for people to get into robotics if they don't really know how to, how to grasp it for the first time, such as Robotics 101 who, which runs along the year. Um, we're open all the time, uh, as long as the department is open, it's at 7 a.m. till midnight every single day, and membership is only three pounds, so maybe you'd want to consider. Uh, <laughs> so now I'm going to get on to what you can do at ICRS during the hackathon. Um, we have 3D printers available. We also have a laser cutter available for any of your uh, prototypes that you want to do. And then we also have soldering, if any of you are doing circuits slash electronics. And then we have some kind of bits and pieces, such as microcontrollers, which you can borrow from the hub, um, just if you want to make circuits, all that sort of thing, any, any sort of tools we have. Then we also have all the more general tools if you're, if you're working on less electronic C hardware. And we have a ton of duct tape. So if anybody has any problem with hardware problem, if with hardware issues, you know what to use. Um, and then just to remind you of where we are, um, I know this has been said before, but basically in the Tripoli building, you go in and you can either use the lifts that will be kind of to your left, but you have to go to level six and then walk down to level five, or you can just use the stairs and then once you come out of the stairs, turn right and you'll, you'll find us. So yeah, um, whether you're doing a hardware hack or not, good luck everybody. <laughs> Hello IC Hackers here, we're delighted to be joined by a very special guest. He's London's first ever Chief Digital Officer, and he was appointed by Sadiq Khan, the Mayor of London, to lead uh, London's te uh, technical strategy. So he's in charge of making sure that uh, London becomes one of the world's smartest cities, and to maintain its status as a global tech hub. So ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Theo Blackwell. Well, uh, this promises to be an absolutely fantastic event, and I think uh, it would be apt to uh, start off by giving a round of applause for all the people who put this all together. And, and I think you can, you can give them an even bigger one right at the end, because I think they're going to be absolutely knackered. <laughs> so, uh, um, so my name's Theo Blackwell. I'm the first Chief Digital Officer for London. I was appointed about 110 days ago by Sadiq Khan. I, I say 110 days ago because I was supposed to write a blog about my first 100 days and I forgot to. Um, <laughs> yeah, note that one for the future. Um, so uh, my job is to make London the smartest city in the world. And that's a long-term project because you can't just go do that overnight. But London is an amazingly complex global city. It has many brains. It's got 32 boroughs, um, each the size of a city in their own right if you took them outside of London or LA or, or New York. Uh, Croydon, for example, anyone live in Croydon? All right, okay. Croydon is the same size as New Orleans, right? Which is a bit of an odd thing to think about. <laughs> and um, London has, you know, eight and a half million people. It's got major institutions such as Imperial, and the other uh, universities. Uh, so world. Uh, <laughs> there we go. No, no, uh, 
know your audience. Um, so, <laughs> so uh, and four, uh, over 40 tech and science clusters and 50,000 tech businesses. But as we all know, you know, the definition of what a tech best business is is getting broader and broader as every organization responds to the digital revolution and every organization becomes a data-driven uh, organization. So we need London not just to be a collection of good things, but we need to move it to the next level, which is London being the smartest city in the world. So this week we launched a listening exercise, which you can follow on our web pages. And also we're going from place to place and publishing on the Medium platform at Smart London, our experiences and our journey, that's me and the Smart London board, which is made up of academics uh, and businesses and members of civil society. And we're exploring the foundations, how we can get the foundations right, the data sharing, uh, the security, the innovation right for London to take that next stage. We're working in partnership with Bloomberg Associates, who did, who's the philanthropic arm of former Mayor Bloomberg in New York, uh, to scope out what we, uh, what we need to do. And we're starting with five themes. The first is citywide collaboration and innovation. That's making sure that when we talk about data and digital transformation in the public sector and across the private sector, we're using the same language. And London's complexity and the complexity of the public sector is we're also big agglomerations of professions who talk in different languages. So when we say smart and when we talk about data and we talk about the application of technology, we need to talk about it in a common shared language. So that's step one. Secondly is new city data leadership. New laws are coming in about the use of data uh, updating the old data protection regulations, laws from Europe which we're bringing in to our uh, country, the GDPR. That's a moment not for us to just sit there and go, uh, how do we respond to some regulations, but actually show leadership, political leadership, civic leadership over data and the big questions, because at the moment people are asking questions about data and what it's used for. And we want to make sure that data collected for the public good is used in a trusted way, that people can see what it is used for um, and they can see the benefits of that. If the potential of trust, we can't use data to make our great city even better. Thirdly, important for London, London activity uh, across the city, uh, and that's inner and outer London. We also want to invest in digital skills and we're launching a mine. So we're not des designing like they did in the 50s and 60s for one individual. Does anyone know the story about the uh, seatbelt of how car accidents in because of what happened uh, during the referendum, where London is now an outward-looking city, outward-looking towards the world, harnessing its talents, and its talents which are both homegrown and international. And the mayor is extremely committed to that task. So over the time in design, and that openness also goes uh, from the tech industry, from civil society, uh, about the broad application of technology and technology for good. An open city that needs to be more open. Enjoy yourself, it looks like you totally will. <laughs> I'm a bit jealous about that. Uh, and thank you for inviting me along to give these opening remarks on behalf of City Khan. Thank you. So during your time here at IC Hack this year, you're going to be fed a ton of other stuff which we haven't mentioned yet because that's all the surprise. And that's all thanks to our amazing, generous sponsors. And we're going to hear from a couple of them um, now. So first up. Oh, 
have. Uh, but if not, I'll do my best. Uh, my name is Georges, and uh, we represent Bloomberg. We provide transparency in the financial markets. That sounds very lame, I know. It's actually... And we try to connect a lot, a lot of people. And... Uh, in the industry so if you want to see you know how a system works that uh, has to be available 24 7 it has to keep going and uh, <coughs> as i said has to process one of the biggest data throughputs in the industry that's us we're gonna we're gonna make some comparisons to other major firms like twitter and such but before anyone says oh so it's just another bank we are not a bank we are actually a, fin a real fintech firm we actually do <laughs> We are a real fintech firm, and yeah, we actually do pro do a lot of kind of financial stuff, and we have a lot of developers who are hardcore, like C++, Python, uh, kind of JavaScript developers doing good work every day. So our main product is, oh, let's go one more, is the terminal. So I'm sure many of you uh, will have seen the terminal either online in movies. Uh, I have a keyboard downstairs, so definitely take a look at our booth when you come down. Uh, the terminal is used by over 300,000 users worldwide, financial users, and what it does is. It allows them to get in contact with other kind of financial users, and it allows them to do their kind of day-to-day -day job, whether they're a buy-side trader, sell-side trader, uh, just a financial analyst of some sort. Uh, it gets them kind of in contact with their kind of market peers, and also uh, with the most up-to-date data. So as George was saying, we have to have the best data, kind of the best quality data, and, uh, and be the first one to market. Otherwise, the likes of Reuters will come by, and hopefully they're not in the building. But yeah, uh, we'll come by. Along with the terminal, we do a whole bunch of enterprise products, which are kind of add-ons. These are used by kind of major kind of stock exchanges and other kind of major firms that allow them to kind of uh, give access to all their users with what we're working on. So although we do have, in one particular case, a kind of niche product, our enterprise products are very, very wide hitting. And uh, I'm sure in 2015, there was a big kind of crash at Bloomberg, and it affected the markets hugely. The fact that you're everyday working, or we are everyday working, writing code, that can affect the markets in such a way. It's quite daunting, but it's also very, very cool. Uh, so yeah, our enterprise products. Uh, just kind of our daily stats, we get almost 80,000 uh, new, new news stories coming in. One million news stories we're always constantly searching and indexing and kind of giving back to uh, our users. And 60 billion market takes. So these are prices or fluctuations in the prices every day. This is a hell of a lot of data. I think if you compare it to kind of tweets per second, so Twitter is uh, pushing out 150,000 tweets. Whereas we are processing 8.5 million equivalent. Twitter is lucky. They only have 140 character limit. We have to deal with the negatives, positives. Okay, maybe it's not that bad. But uh, it's like, it's a huge uh, amount of uh, data. We're always kind of doing kind of modeling and financial modeling. And uh, we have kind of one of the largest JavaScript code bases in the world, although we're trying to get, move, get away from it. But uh, <laughs> legacy code is everywhere. It's hard to kind of maintain. But uh, that's why we're hiring, to help get rid of the legacy code. We do have a whole bunch of new software as well. We, have, we use things like Node, we use things like uh, Postgres. We are a big C++ shop, but that doesn't stop us from kind of migrating out and using all these new, latest and uh, greatest technologies. So it's open source as well. Yeah, we, we, uh, we, add back, we give back to the open source community. So we have a whole bunch of developers that uh, just work, and whatever they're working on, if they feel like it's appropriate to give back to the community, then yeah, we definitely do. So we've got uh, Solar, OpenStack, Hadoop, and uh, such. We, uh, we're very, very heavily involved in kind of the DevX community. So we have people on the boards for C++. Uh, we, have, we have like a uh, constant kind of contact with basically hacking, DevX, and boots as such. And we're always trying to kind of get involved with the community. As, uh, as it's heard before, we're trying to always kind of uplift the community and kind of do good after the public needs. Um, over the next two days, it's going to be myself, Arjun, Jojo, Jojos, and Jamal. Jamal is not here with us today, but he will be tomorrow. Uh, we're just here to help. If you have any Bloomberg questions, non-Bloomberg questions, computing questions, send them his way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a brief introduction of that. Um, I work in the mobile team, so if anyone's doing any mobile projects, React, Swift, Android, whatever, uh, obviously C++, as he said, Bloomberg is a C++ temple. Um, yeah, you feel free to come reach out to me. I can help out a lot. And uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so
so I, I personally work in kind of a bit, uh, mainly C++, uh, C++ uh, plus, uh, shop and a little bit of JavaScript and Python. But if you have C++ questions, if you have Java questions, I was in your seats, I think, four years ago, during Sorry. the 2014 hackathon. And at the time, I took two days off because I wanted to get away from my WAC coursework. If that's too hard to get it on, there we go. So if you have any WAC courseworks, I have a GitHub link somewhere. Just, you know what to do. You know what to do. Uh, we will also be hosting a, a hacker rank. So uh, what we're going to do is we'll uh, send it off, and I think around 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, we'll uh, send out a hacker rank link. But if you come up to our desk, we'll give you a hacker rank link, and we'll have a couple of questions on there. And we'll be just kind of monitoring if you, uh, if you can get through the questions, if you do well. We'll be handing out prizes, and anybody who completes the full hacker rank, which yeah, if you do, then yes, very good job. We'll be giving uh, that kind of team or those people like uh, a good prize. Um, yeah, good price. We're also kind of monitoring the kind of groups and kind of what they're working on, and see if there's any cool, cool projects. And if there's anything we really like, then yeah, there's the potential for us to on the mini, mini prize because I get the best tech or the most innovative tech that we have. And most of all, this is, of course, why we're here for a reason. Uh, this is a major sales pitch. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Bloomberg is always hiring, we're always hiring from the best. So, Imperial, and we are just going to we have summer internships, uh, we have graduate schemes, just go to the website, send an application, and have fun. Thanks. Next up we have booking.com. So we're a quantitative research and development company. 
So essentially, we analyze a lot of fine natural information and then actually make some interesting decisions based upon them. And as a technology company, we create all the software that's actually required from making those predictions and going to market. So executing all the trades, doing all the live monitoring of our systems, and then doing post-trade analysis. So lots of cool stuff. So me personally, I, I graduated from Imperial last summer, and I started in September as a grad, as a software developer. And already quickly, I can see like the opportunity to do like a lot of interesting stuff. So yeah. So. Um, yeah. Hi, I'm Martin. Uh, I also graduated from Imperial. I did a master's last year, so I joined in September. Uh, it's a really exciting and friendly place to work at. My team is creating tools for quants. Uh, they use it for um, make their research and predict market movements. Um, yeah, we are definitely hiring, but for this year, uh, we are closed for grads and interns, sadly. But please apply for next year. Hey guys, we're Shumjay, uh, we I'm have with my colleague, some just me in the corner, food, drinks, um, and have, Shumjay uh, is a global uh, oil and gas service uh, provider, um, we provide technology all the way from exploration yeah, to production, to here and, and a lot of that technology is in we'll the form of software. <laughs> and in China, so lots of scope for interesting uh, travel and um, seeing the world as you code. Um, we are hiring, we're definitely open this year for taking uh, <laughs> both internships, uh, full-time positions. We've got a range of uh, skills we're looking for, um, particularly some of them are up there. We're big into high performance computing simulation. If you like your comp side with a touch of engineering and science, then we've got lots of challenges. We're into uh, web app design, looking at uh, collaborative um, spaces for engineers to work in the oil and gas sector. We collect a huge amount of data through all our instrumentation, and that data sorely needs some more analysis. So uh, data processing, data analysis, security is key. These are big uh, multinational companies we're dealing with. So many, many challenges. The oil industry is a really exciting place at the minute. All the companies are recognizing that they need to uh, increase their digitalization to really transform if they're going to be effective, efficient, safe operators in the next 10 years, and Shumja are driving that. And we are, shameless plug, we're looking for great people to come and help us with that drive. Um, so, uh, also come and see us at the stand. We've got a stand upstairs. We've got a little coding challenge. Uh, we're giving away some tech. It's a slightly geeky, oil-focused coding challenge, so hopefully come along, it's Python. Uh, give us a go and uh, see how you get on. Great. All the best, guys. We'll see you around. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Visa. Hey, guys. So I'm really excited to be here. Uh, Imperial is one of my favorite colleges, so uh, let's just get... <laughs> of course, right? Uh, so I head the cybersecurity group at Visa. Uh, I just have a quick question for you guys. So uh, what is Visa? How many people think it's like a dating app? Ah, oh, great. That's kind of a credit card issuer. No. Payments technology. Of course, thank you. Not a bank. So we, <laughs> we are a payments technology. The biggest group in Visa is the technology group. It's, uh, so that's the core of what we do. So many people don't know that. Uh, next slide, please. So we are actually more than you expect. Uh, we are... Uh, like billions of cards, uh, 200 countries. Uh, as you know, like we are, basically we are everywhere you want to be. Uh, so uh, 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 literally, um, the other thing that we really feel is that we, we, we truly help drive economic growth. We have like a core part of the economy in, in many countries. Uh, if you actually see the, the percent of the economy that Visa is a part of, it's like a huge percent. So it's like a re really important part of the economy. And... Um, the other thing Visa is really truly big into is the financial inclusion and literacy. Illiteracy. So uh, we, we really want to make sure that we, we also fulfill our social obligations. Um, and uh, like the whole Visa was created based on trust because that's the fundamental like point of uh, of driving these payment kind of systems. And that's why it's one of the also one of the world's most admired and ethical companies. Uh, uh, naturally, we also have very inclusive culture. We're all over the world. 
we are very focused on like really uh, inclusive and diversity. That's like a big, really core value for us. Um, there's huge opportunity. I think the key thing is we want to scale for 10x. We already like really big and we want to like make it 10 times bigger. So right now it's like 3 billion um, cards which are moving to more like Apple Pay, digital, all of those elements. 46 million locations. Uh, we want to grow to like 30 billion, like 10x uh, ways to pay. Could be any different kind of ways to pay. And more than 400 million ways to be paid. So really working with the merchants, the whole ecosystem to make it like an absolutely seamless uh, environment. And so we have all kinds of opportunities here. Uh, we have new software defined architecture with like net SDN, uh, SDN networking or credentials. Big data is a huge part of what we do. Um, open technology, we're looking at all kinds of new stuff there. Um, and then cybersecurity, of course, that's uh, where, <laughs> where I'm in. So a plug for that. It's like a, a critical element for us. And uh, threats are growing much faster than um, what we can come up with. So we're really trying to figure out new techniques, machine learning, all kinds of things to really solve these problems. Um, so this is where I think you can make an impact. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this movie, but uh, this <laughs> again, a plug for cybersecurity there. Uh, uh, this is like, we have like a group uh, across the world. Uh, London's going to be one of the key centers. So we're really looking actively to hiring in cybersecurity and uh, also in big data and uh, the core processing group. So really, really cool opportunities. Uh, this is another, I'm sure you guys know this. And uh, finally, uh, I hope you guys all know what uh, asymmetric encryption is. But uh, so that's all I had to say. And please, uh, I have my colleagues here in the blue out there. Very easy to spot. So please, if you are interested, we're uh, actively looking for um, you know, graduates and summer interns in London and Reading. So uh, uh, v.sa.apply and search for United Kingdom. Uh, thank you and best of luck. Thanks very much. Next up we have KPMG. Morning campus. Howdy hi. Howdy hi. Um, so yeah, my name's Matt. I'm from KPMG, um, one of the world's largest consultancy firms. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you know uh, that KPMG and Imperial have an alliance. Um, if any of you guys have been to our, uh, the data observatory in the William Penny building. Anyone? No? You should go there because it's, it's really cool. Um, it's essentially a huge 313 degree uh, surround space that we can digitize and present uh, really complex data sets to clients um, in really interesting ways for them to uh, you know, make decisions on their businesses. So uh, part of our graduate training programs, uh, we've got a, a few grads uh, currently working in there as well. So I do employ you to go and check it out. What I was going to just quickly talk about um, rather than um, talk about the, you know, internships and grad programs that we have, because we're all doing that. Um, just come and see us down on the lower hack zone. Uh, come and talk to us about that. But I thought I'd just let you know that I'll be back here on uh, throughout February. Uh, first of all, on the 5th of Feb, um, running a competition in the, in the, the Sherfield building uh, where there's a chance for you to win £100 worth of Amazon vouchers and get to come to our office and do some really cool stuff there. And then throughout, if you can, yeah, throughout the throughout February, we're going to be running uh, an AR-a-thon. So if you want to get a team together, if you're interested in, um, you know, once the hack's over and you know you're on a down and you want you know want to get into a project, then please get involved. Uh, go to kpmg.com/ideationchallenge, and it's what we're trying to do is get you guys to get a team together and come up with devise um, how AR. Um, can um, benefit a company of your choice and then hopefully the winners um, from Imperial will get to go to France and sort of work on actually realizing that uh, project that you've worked on and delivering it and building it so and that's really cool so uh, get a team together by the 12th of Feb uh, go to that website or yeah come and see us down on the the lower hack zone uh, and just chat to us about what we've got all right thanks for coming and thanks for having me Next up, we have Accenture. Uh, uh, 
do we have a video at some point as well? We'll, like, we'll play that later. Um, hi, so my name is Anka Banerjee. I'm you know, really glad to see the massive attendance that we have. So um, should be a good week of hacking. Um, I am a technology lead at Liquid Studio, which is one of our innovation labs. Uh, we actually have a collaboration with Imperial as well. So if you want to talk about that, come find me. And yeah, I wanted to introduce some of the other people that we have working around, etc., as well, and then tell you about the challenge that we have later today. Yep. Um, hello, I'm Matthew. I'm a placement student. Um, so this is my year in the industry, and I'm also I was hired as a software engineer for my internship. So I do quite a lot of uh, like development. Um, uh, my background is in Java, but uh, for my projects, I had to like, work on C sharp. So I had to learn that for the project, and um, just uh, yeah, that's me. I'm Alicia. I joined Accenture about coming up to two years ago now. Uh, I'm a full stack developer, so at the moment I'm mainly working in Angular and Node.js and things like that. Hi, my name's Yatharta. So same as Matthew, uh, I'm a placement student as well. So this is my year in industry. So I've been involved in a lot of um, various kind of projects. First, I was involved with some network stuff. Now I'm hopefully We'll be doing some artificial intelligence stuff with Ankur. So, yeah, that's it. Hey, I'm Praveen, and I'm a full stack developer too. And uh, I have been with Accenture for the past two and a half years, and I have been doing crazy things all the two years. So, the first project which I did has no uh, relation with the last one which I did. So, it's like that. It's going awesome. Um, so, uh, so, so we have a broad range of skills. If you want to talk to people about what's going on um, with your hack, if you need some help, um, also check out help.ichack.org. I think the organizers have set that up. Um, so we're running a challenge here uh, today for the best ethical or the best for good hack. Um, it's it's something that we do a lot of like you know research on within our innovation lab team as well. Um, a lot of technology can be a major force for good, but it needs to be applied in the right way. So it's a fairly open-ended brief. Um, so you know, love to see what what you come up with on the creative side there. And uh, the prizes are Amazon Echo Dots. So for for the entire team. So yeah, cool. Can we play the video as well? So we have Joe in the purple like uh, hoodie there. He's slightly dying because of flu, but it, he's from our recruitment team. And if you have any questions about recruitment, we are recruiting, so do grab him. Next up, we have Next Jump. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Graham and I'm the head of engineering at NextJump. So many of you will be wondering, well, who is NextJump? NextJump is a business who makes technological solutions to help companies engage better with their employees. There's two main ways in which we do this. The first is through our Perks of Work platform. It's a global e-commerce system actually used by many of the sponsors in this room. Uh, Microsoft, Bloomberg, Accenture, to name a few. We have 30 million users and are actually used by 70% of the Fortune 1000 companies. Last year, we actually did two and a half billion pounds in revenue. On the other half of our business is really around HR technologies. We have a suite of mobile apps there to kind of develop and grow employees inside these organizations, used by a similar set of clients, but also including the military and the education sector as well. 
And here's some of the tech which we use actually to power this. So at Next Jump, the key principle of what's baked into everything we do is to do the little things that allows others to do the great things that they are meant to do. And in this principle, like I said, it's really built into everything we do. It's our DNA. It's the way we approach products. So when we're thinking about building products to help these employees feel valued, we're really thinking about how can we make the product the most helpful. It's the same way we've started a movement to transform children's education through our adopt school movement. The highest honor at Next Jump is the Avengers Award. The Avengers Award is given to the individual who exemplifies this mantra the most. It's not the individual who releases the best code or releases the best feature or writes the best code, but the individual who goes out of their way to help others succeed the most. We take this very, very seriously, and there's a $50,000 prize for the individual, for them and their family to take a two-week vacation to basically go and do whatever they want. Our prize category this year is the most helpful hack. We really wanted to bring the spirit of this mantra into the hackathon to share with you all. Sadly, there is no $50,000 prize, but, <laughs> but we do have some Google Minis and a whole bunch of Next Gym swag to give you as well. We really want to see you exercise your problem-solving, creativity, and teamwork skills to, to create the most impactful ha hack that will help other people. We have two things which we're doing to help you get the most out of your hackathon experience. At 4 o'clock, we have a Vue.js workshop with one of our engineers, Craig. Uh, where we've, really, we've recently re upgraded our travel platform to use Vue.js. We found it to be very easy but very powerful and wanted to share this with you so you can kind of use it inside your hacks. Uh, the second thing is a sleep class. So many of you, I think, attended this last year and it's backed by popular demand. Uh, so we have two, uh, two uh, sleep classes running, one at 6 and one at 6.30. So... I sound like a broken record here, but we're also recruiting. Um, <laughs> we're looking for kind of full-time interns and placements. If this sounds like a company you're interested in, myself and my team, there'll be some of us here today, some of us here tomorrow, um, up in the upper hack zone, who, where you can come and talk to us about any of the problems you have. We'll be on MentorQ to answer any questions, or also just to find out more about Next Jump. We're going to be uh, on our Slack channel, and we'll be posting lots of little competitions throughout the day. So that's it from us, and happy hacking. Next up, we have Ocado Technology. Hello. Hi there. Wow, look at all you people. Um, thanks for inviting us. Thanks for letting us be part of your hackathon. Um, for those of you that know who Ocado Technology are, um, we are a, an online retailer. Oh, grocer is boring. Um, but we're so much more than that. So um, we are powering the world's retail. We want the world to be online, and we want to be able to help them do that. Um, you might have heard us about us in the news recently. We've uh, signed some deals abroad, so we've just signed uh, a very good deal with a Canadian company called Sobeys, who we're going to help get their uh, retail business online, which is very exciting. You may have also heard about Second Hands Project, which is a robotics project we've been working on, which is very exciting. Um, so I'm Kelly. I'm unfortunately a recruiter. I won't mention it. Um, <laughs> this is Tom. Hi, Hi Tom. Hi. I'm in the uh, data science team at Ocado. Um, I'm a Imperial graduate. I actually tendered the first IC hack back in the ancient history of 2012. Um, and it's grown massively. I think that only had 100 people as opposed to the 400 here. Um, yeah. <coughs> Great. So we have a, a problem for you today that uh, Tom and the very um, amazing data science team are going to um, put out there on the Slack channel. So do look us up. We're on the lower hack floor. Um, we've got some very cool prizes. So we have a VR headset um, and some Echo Dots. So please come along and, and give it a go. It's, it's quite a challenge, but we think you might be up for it. Um, and yeah, if you want to know anything else about us, come and visit our stand and, uh, and we'll have a chat with you. Thanks. Next up, we have TPP. Hi, my name is Sam, uh, and I'm from TPP, and you probably haven't heard of us either. Um, so we're a leading provider in healthcare solutions. So we've got about 60 million patient records in the UK. So probably 50% of you, we store your medical information. Um, 
So this is our first time at Imperial, uh, the, at the hackathon, um, and I'd be lying to you if I didn't say that we are also recruiting. Um, so we've got a number of different positions, but most of you will be interested in the software development position. Um, so uh, one of the things that we pride ourselves in is our work-life balance, so we're not always just at the office. Uh, we put on a free pub on Fridays and stuff like that, which you may have been interested. Um, so yeah, so um, uh, the prize craft category that we're doing uh, is based on the software that we do. Um, so that's the greatest impact to healthcare. Um, so in that, we've provided um, some sample patient information, um, which is just pretend. So this is um, a national standard for kind of like storing medical information. So it can be quite broad. Um, and quite large. Um, so I've given you that, and that's on the Slack channel, so you can have a look at that if you want. Obviously, the price category is quite open, so if you don't fancy using the uh, data that we've provided, we're looking at anything that's out of the box and interesting, basically. Uh, yeah, so I'll keep it brief, but yeah, enjoy the hack, and uh, come speak to us. We're on the lower floor. Uh, the three of us, we're all wearing blue lanyards, so you can stand us out from the other blue lanyards. Um, <laughs> so yeah, come and speak to us. Uh, we'll be happy to speak to you. Cheers. As well as all the uh, sponsors you just heard from, we've, we're also sponsored by a couple of other companies. So do check them out. You can find them on our website. Um, but finally, I want to introduce to you our title sponsor, Microsoft, to give us the keynote for IC Hack 18, powered by Microsoft. <laughs> So we're here as Microsoft, we've got the Microsoft engineering team here, we're going to be helping you throughout the hack. So we're really here today to see what you can build with our platform. We want you to look at the Microsoft Cognitive Services. So we've done this a number of different hacks throughout this year, so we're at Cambridge Hack last week, so we see a lot of the sponsors who are also there. We had some amazing results. We want you to build things that make people's lives easier. That's our mantra, it's about making things better and more simple. So come This is a set of APIs. These are completely I'm free. We're going to give everyone here today. I lost my sight when I was seven. Dollars of Azure. And the next shortly three after that, I went to a school Azure. for the blind. You just simply go into the Slack and channel. That's where you do a direct message to the Slack bot, and computers. you will get the credit. And that really opened up a whole new world of opportunity. I just want to show you this quickly of what we built with Microsoft ten services. years ago as a software engineer. I love making things which improve people's lives. And one of the things I've always dreamt of since I was at university was this idea of something that could tell you at any moment what's going on around you. I think it's a man jumping in the air doing a trick on a skateboard. I teamed up with like-minded engineers to make an app which lets you know who and what is around you. It's based on top of the Microsoft Intelligence API, which makes it so much easier to make this kind of thing. The app runs on smartphones, but also on the Pivot Head smart glasses. When you're talking to a bigger group, sometimes you can talk and talk and there's no response and you think, is everyone listening really well? Or are they half asleep? And you never know. I see two faces. 40-year-old man with a beard looking surprised. 20-year-old woman looking happy. The app can describe the general age and gender of the people around me and what their emotions are, which is incredible. One of the things that's most useful about the app is the ability to read out text. Hello, good afternoon. Here's your menu. Great, thank you. I can use the app on my phone to take a picture of the menu and it's going to guide me on how to take that correct photo. Move camera to the bottom right and away from the document. And then it'll recognize the text. Read me the headings. I see appetizers, salads, paninis, pizzas, pastas. Hi. Years ago, this was science fiction. I never thought it would be something that you could actually do. But artificial intelligence is improving at an ever faster rate. And I'm really excited to see where we can take hey. this. 
As engineers, we're always standing on the shoulders of giants, building on top of what went before. And in this case, we've taken years of research from Microsoft Research to pull this off. I think it's a young girl throwing an orange frisbee in the park. For me, it's about taking that far-off dream and building it one step at a time. I think this is just the beginning. So that is all real. That's available now. You can download that on iOS to become into Android in the next few weeks. And more importantly, it's an API. We're going to do iOS, we're going to do Android, we're going to do every programming language. So we're going to do Java, we're going to do Python, we're going to do JavaScript. We want you to do what you do and work on our platform. So the key thing is we also offer a custom vision AI. So if anybody's played with TensorFlow or things like CNTK to do deep neural nets, this is a pre-programmed deep neural net. It already has a number of different classifications in there, so like retail, people, animals, and you can build a custom model with six images per category and two tags. So two tags with six images each, and you will get a 90% proof model. We've done this internally, we've done it externally, we've got a workshop that'll cover this as well. So we want you to use these services to make your apps better. In terms of how to do this and why you want to do it, is we're actually going to give the winning team an Xbox One X each. So you will have an Xbox One X. You're going to get $100 Azure for three months. We're going to give you all the support that you need. So we're all on the Slack channel. We're going to be on the help desk services. We're on the top floor of the hack space. If you've got queries, questions, problems, come and see us. And again, you know, please engage with us. We have lots of jobs in lots of different areas. We're not here to sell you jobs. You know, we want you to build a portfolio that allows you to go in any job that you want. Key thing is portfolio, okay? So everybody, enjoy the next 24 hours, have amazing fun, and just enjoy it. So we've just heard from all of our amazing sponsors and all the different prizes which they, they have to offer, but we also have some of our own as well. So as you can see here, there's five sponsor prizes, but we also have some of our own prizes. The first one is the DocSox Choice pri uh, Prize, which is for the one which we deem to be the most creative, useful, interesting, or innovative. We also have the Best Newcomers Hack, which is a prize awarded to a team which is more than 50% first years. We have Best Hardware Hack, which is for the most impressive hack uh, made, made using hardware or Internet of Things or something like that. Best native mobile app, which speaks for itself, and best web app, and also the best game or augmented reality app. Um, we have many great prizes on, on offer for these, including Nintendo Switch, Echo Show, monitors, 3D printers, speakers, so please do take part in those. We've already seen some dank memes today from Visa, <laughs> but we also want to see your dank memes. So we have a memes channel on Slack, and we have a prize for that as well. So get posting those, and we'll choose the best one uh, from the weekend. As Alessandro mentioned at the beginning, we have karaoke at 2 AM. And we have a prize available for the most interesting or the best performance uh, from that. So we look forward to seeing those. Just a few bits of housekeeping. You should all have been invited to Slack by now. But if you aren't on it, you can join by following the link on the screen. Uh, each sponsor has a dedicated Slack channel, which might have been mentioned before, but you can go into those Slack channels and talk to the sponsors directly. We also have announcements where we'll be posting all the important information about food, workshops, and other events which we're hosting this weekend, so do make sure to look in there. And if you do have any questions or you need help, we have a help desk channel which you can message us in there. Also, everyone who goes to Imperial, you shouldn't have a problem with this. 
If you're not an Imperial student and you want to get on our Wi-Fi, you can use EduRoam. If you do have problems with that, we also have the Imperial network. You might want to take a picture of this if you aren't from Imperial. And if you do have any problems signing up to this, just send us a message or find one of us in an orange t-shirt and we'll be happy to help you get onto the Wi-Fi. And on a more serious note, don't be a dick. Hack zones and start hacking as it approaches 12 p.m. Uh, tw yeah, it is 12 p.m., isn't it? Um, if you don't have a team, do stay here and we'll do some team, team making exercises. Otherwise, we'll see you all at the hack zones.